G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at the Volcara F210. Now, you recall a while ago Volcara sent me their Runner 250. I wasn't very impressed with the product. It was a bit frail, it didn't handle very well. Um, generally, it missed the mark. They were pitching it as a mini quad racer, but mm, it was far from that. And it was kind of proven when they brought out the GPS piloted version of it. I mean, no one has a GPS on a racing mini quad. So it was a product that I guess some people enjoyed, but I think it fell short of the mark in many respects. Now, to their credit, Walkera have sent me this. It is the F210, as I say. It is their next um, generation of consumer-grade mini quad, racing mini quad. So I have to say, I haven't even taken it out of the box yet, but it's starting to look a lot more like they're getting close to that magic target. And, you know, it's got some of the features of the old 250, not so much as you get this lovely padded box you can use this as a box for carrying the thing around instead of having to throw everything in a rucksack or lose bits you know you can reuse this it's lovely um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the bits out of here I'm going to show you what you get now this is the RTF version so it comes with the Devo 7 transmitter it comes with the battery for the quad it comes with everything you need except your video glasses and I'll be testing this with the Google glasses uh, not the Google the, sorry the Walkera goggle the Walkera goggles which they sent me earlier that's the goggle 2 there we go so that's from the runner 250 package I'll be testing with this but just worth mentioning Walkera are bringing out a new set of HD video goggles which um, they look a bit bling but the feedback I've had from people who have actually tried them out is very positive so I'll be looking at those and don't forget also I've got a review of the the Fat Shark HD2s coming up very shortly in a couple of days but without further ado let's get into the box and uh, I won't unbox it because we don't do that, but we'll have a look at what you get for your money when you buy one of these F210s. And here is the quad itself. Now the first thing I notice about it, it's a lot smaller than the old 250, the Run 250, which is good. Next thing I notice is they're starting to use some sensible thickness of carbon here. We've got, looks like 2mm carbon for these side frames, and the arms look like they are possibly 3mm. I'll mic those and check. But yeah, it's starting to look like they're using some sensible materials. There's a nice plastic tray in here. One of the problems that the 250 did have was the battery was not very well retained. It could slide forward and smack the, the OSD. This one seems to have a nice little tray for the battery, which fits in there. Brilliant. Uh, the antenna mounting is a lot more secure. It's not going to snap off because it's got this little hook at the back here. Plastic, that's brilliant. Goes right down to the transmitter on the bottom with a 90 degree connector. So you can replace this with your own because, as I said, I'm not impressed with the Walkera's antennas, but we'll try them out, see how they go. The bottom's looking a lot more solid than the old one. The, fortunately, they haven't, uh, they've resisted the temptation to route out these arms, so hopefully these arms are going to be super, super tough. I mean, they look good enough to me. Uh, there's a piece of metal here, look, aluminium, aluminium if you live in America. They've actually got some metal in this frame, which is, you know, quite surprising. It looks like there's a couple of powerful LEDs in there, because they claim this thing has a night vision camera, so I'm wondering, they're either visible or IR LEDs which will give you the ability to fly this thing at night. That's quite cool. We've got the Walkera props. I mean, I'm not a great fan of the spin-on props because they're just too damn expensive. So if you get one of these, you probably want to get spare props or you want to get some clockwise and counterclockwise. I think it should be five millimeter. Let's have a look and see, um, which if I can, ooh, I can't get them off. I'll do it later. Um, some proper prop nuts. So you can use any of the other props that are out there. Now, these look like 2204 motors. I don't know how many kV. See if I can read it. Ooh, we'll carry it. it says we'll carry. Yep, that's a 2500 kV, which is pretty good. 28014. So I don't know, but 2500 kV means lots and lots of revs, which is good because it's really only a three cell mini quad. But that's okay. I've got plenty of three cell mini quads that fly really well. XT60 is nicely built in here, so you're not going to have that battery lead flapping around in the props. The antennas are fold out. Which means if you hit something they'll probably fold back instead of breaking nice actually they'll go that way won't they because that's the front <laughs> as I say, you can see the camera is tiltable so that's quite a good um yeah i think they've addressed a lot of the issues now i know one of the things that people are going to be looking at and saying oh is the escs and the general design of the electronics and this is an example of what i'm talking about now walkera have made this whole thing plug and play so it's not designed for the likes of people who like to sort of spend their evenings huddled over a smoldering soldering iron it's for people who don't want to be fussed with soldering stuff if an esc blows up they just want to be able to plug it in plug in a new one without farting around and to that end this all looks to be plug and play i think um there's a board there which has two bolts and that seems to plug into this oops out of shot here that board has a couple of bolts plugs into that main pdb and on the other end the motor wires just plug into the 
ESC. So, yeah, it's it's going to be a lot easier for people who don't want to get involved in the techie side of things to repair this if they break it or if something blows up, which is it's a good thing because, as I say, the market for this thing is not the same market that buys ZMR250s and builds from scratch. It's the market that just want to go and buy a store-bought mini-quad and go fly the damn thing. Okay, so let's check those material thicknesses. I guess this at about two, and it is... Oh, it's one and a half, one point, yeah, 1.5 mils for the side panels. My guesstimates are terrible. Um, these arms are three millimeters. That's good. Three millimeters on the arms. The by the time you combine these two plates here, you've got a total of five millimeters there. So the other plate must be two mils thick. Yeah, it all looks pretty pretty solid. Far more solid than the original. I'm far happier with this than the Runner 250. And this is the battery that's provided. It's a pretty generic looking. Oh, actually, it's a four cell. There you go. I was wrong. I thought it was a three cell quad, but it actually comes with a four cell battery. Now, that's good. This should actually be quite peppy. 2500 kV with four cells. That can give you quite a bit of grunt. And it has, of course, XT60 connector on it. Woohoo. Of course, there's no information on the battery as to the C rating or anything, but I guess we'll find out how well it stands up once we start throwing the damn thing around the sky. And yes, the people that will care have obviously seen my videos because they've thrown in some spare props, which is great. And how big are the props? Anyway, let's have a look here. They are. 5 inch, so it's running 5 inch props here, which is great, 5 inch props, and what else we get there, actually they gave me some, some other spare props as well, so fortunately I've got 3 sets of, well, more than 3 sets, brilliant, lots of spare propellers, thank you Walkera, I will do my best to uh, justify your faith in my ability to break props, uh, you get the usual little tool parts thing, this is like a Allen wrench and a little thing for adjusting, what are that Titans, probably the SMA connector on the antenna, I don't know. We'll find out when I break something. The usual user manual on disk and also in print. And that's really important because, you know, us having to fart around load downloading a manual sometimes when you're in a hurry just to get it out of the box, get it in the air. Nice to have something in print. You can you can read that while you're uh, in bed. In fact, it's in a plastic bag. You read it in the shower. How about that? Good stuff. Comes with a charger. Pretty nondescript charger. Unfortunately, they didn't provide me with the mains plug, but it's a fairly standard plug. There's plenty of those laying around somewhere. Um, and it plugs, obviously, charges through the balance port. I don't know. Most of us will be using four button charges, but remember, this is for the person who just wants to buy something off the shelf and go out and use it. So the inclusion of a reasonably good charger, it's got a, uh, what is it, 3.5 amp output, so that'll charge your battery in pretty quick time. That's a nice touch. That's better than the usual little grotty charges that you get thrown in with these packages. And of course, we get the ubiquitous Devo 7 transmitter that seems to get bundled with all these things. Now, as I've said in the past, you can get other transmitters from Walkera. They have a longer range one, which has a bigger antenna, and they even have one with a built-in LCD screen for your FPV. I'm going to use the Devo 7 as comes. I hope, well, I assume it's going to be all set up so the little switches will change modes and things. I'll check the instructions because that's why they're there. But uh, yeah, this is a serviceable radio. Things I've already spoken about things I don't like about it, and that is the battery. Look, uh, these bloody, and these AA holders, that's, as I say, I don't like them. And why is it running on 9.6 volts? I mean, come on, this is <laughs> this is the 21st century. We run on 5 volts internally, so having all that 9.6 volts just a waste. I wish Walkera would bring this up to date. Uh, although I know they're obviously well covered their manufacturing or their development costs, so this is money for jam, these transmitters, and they are very low cost. But it would be great if they just changed them so you could run them on a lower voltage instead of wasting a whole lot of money in many cases on dry cells because you know a lot of people when they buy this off the shelf they just throw some alkalines in there and it'll run for a reasonable amount of time but you know it'd be nice if you could just throw for example the Futaba I reviewed recently it has just four AA cells and I like to throw in a LIFE battery you know just grab one of those 6.6 .6 volt LIFE batteries throw them in these things they work a treat but it ain't gonna fit in there and it's also wasting a lot of power because it has to be dropped from um, well in this case 9.6 volts down to the 5 volts and the 3.3 volts used internally. But apart from that, not too many grizzles about the transmitter. They work. The, the range is okay, probably about a kilometre, kilometre and a bit. In a mini quad, you'd probably be lucky to get a kilometre because the, there are compromises in terms of the aerials. And you're also flying in a thing called the Fresnel Zone, which I will talk about in a future video if people want to know about it. So there you go, that's the transmitter. I've got a collection of these forming now. And, <laughs> you know, um, it would be nice if we had an option. Uh, by the way, if you do want to change it, this has a JST connector here, but it's a devil's own job to get them out most of the time. They have a clamp around them, which sort of locks them in place. I don't know why. I lied about the power cord. They do include one with a Euro plug. Everything Walkera sends me has a Euro plug. Maybe they think I live in Europe, but 
Actually, in this part of the world, New Zealand and Australia, we have our own plugs which look nothing like that. And these are, I'll cut that off and I'll put a proper plug on there or something. I've got an adapter, use that, but they, oh, the adapters are crap. They keep falling out, don't work properly. Never mind. There's a USB cable here. So obviously we've got some USB ability on this setup. And there's also the one thing I love, Walkera, a trainer cord. They always provide a trainer cord. And that's great because you can never have too many trainer cords. Brilliant. Thank you, Walkera, for all these extra little bits and pieces. I'm just going to check the box, see if I have missed anything. Oh, and I have. Look at that. Ta-da. It's a piece of black sticky stuff. I think it goes under your battery just to stop your battery from sliding around. Nice touch. So there it is, the new F210. And, and I've got to say, it's, it's a huge leap ahead of the Walkera Runner 250. I think Walkera finally starting to get their act together when it comes to these little mini quads. I'm really looking forward to flying this. So what I will do now is I will charge up the battery. I will convert the transmitter to mode one because I'm mode one, it comes in mode two. I didn't tell them to send a mode one, but that's okay. Um, and we'll take it out and we'll give it a damn good thrashing in the next uh, video as part of this review series. Now, um, I'm a bit rusty. My mini quad skills are pretty rusty. I haven't been flying mini quads much recently, so I will need to do a bit of practice first. In fact, if you go to my XJet channel, you will see that I have um, been trying to get some practice in with the what is it, the Quadrasteria QR200, which uh, I'm kind of liking at the moment. And there'll be a full review or completion of that review coming up very soon. And also a flight test review on the DAL180, which I've been playing with a little bit, but I really haven't had the time to do the mini quad reviews and mini quad flying. So now you will be able to uh, see how all these things stack up. But remember, this isn't really a sort of full blown racing quad. It is just a sensible progression by Walkera. Got rid of the horrible, um, the horrible 250 and given us something that we might really actually be able to have a bit of fun with without worrying about it falling in half. So there you go, Walkera. Thank you for sending this in. I must always tell people, look at the description of my videos because when someone sends something in, I always disclose it so that you, you know if you think that might influence my judgment, which it doesn't because they sent in the Runner 250 as well and I really panned that. But this one, I'm liking it a whole lot better. So stay tuned. Part two of this coming up with some flight tests and we'll just see how the damn thing flies. In the meantime, if you've got comments, if you've got questions, anything you want to know about this that you think I might be able to tell you, then please put them in the space provided by YouTube below this video and I'll do my best to answer it and address them. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Now it's time for me to get back to the bench.